joining us from Milwaukee is the uh, Milwaukee Rebbe and his Rebbe son, Rebbe Tzin Feige. And from Chicago, their son, Rabbi Ephraim. This is a Hasidish dynasty that goes all the way back to uh, Haran Steipel, I guess, sons on some level. Welcome, a great honor to have you. Thank you. <clears throat> Please so I'd like to ask the, Rabbi, I want to ask you a, a simple question, but I think it's important. Why do we have children? Why do we have children? Who, who are you addressing the question to? The rabbi. The rabbi. The, the, the rabbi. Why do we, but you're all welcome. I start, why do we have children? I mean, besides the fact that it's a, a mitzvah, I say, pruruvu. If you ask the brisk, you would say, it's a mitzvah, I say. <clears throat> besides the mitzvah, I say. Um, I, I think part of, of the, just the general human DNA is a, uh, uh, the, 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 there is a, um, an understanding of a profound intuitive understanding in, in the, in the human spirit that there is something immortal about man. And, um, the British love intends that immortality to, to be experienced in, um, in, in a relationship with him, but it, it is also experienced in, in our, in, in a sense that if we can, uh, <coughs> uh, if we can move something of ourselves into the future, that that, that will be an expression of our immortality and our, and, and, and the eternity of, of our being. So I think that, I think everywhere there is this, this um this internal internal sense this internal drive to move something of ourselves into the future and i think that 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 above and beyond the mitzvah i think that that's something that everybody everybody wants to do because it's, <coughs> it's a way in which they can they can um, leave, leave something of themselves uh, and, and uh, make a mark so 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 even people who, who are who don't who don't have children for whatever reason have a need to 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 leave something of themselves. It may be in music and it may be in literature. Um, um and, and 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 yeah, it may be in, in acts of kindness to others or that that uh, that, that, that makes it that, there's something of this this legacy aspect. And I'd like to add on to what the Rebbe said that I believe the Ramban on the Pasik Kanisi Ish as Alekim. So Rashi teaches Kanisi Ish Im Alekim, but the but the uh, I created it with God. But but the Ramban says when Adam Marishan heard he was gonna die, he was mitstire that he wouldn't be there to be Makabal Pteh Mashiach for the end of time. So he said, With my child, I will be there at the end. So through my child, I've me- regained my my relationship with Kaviyachal. That's what we teach is Kanisi Eishas Kim, like the Rebbe is saying, I believe. Uh, Rebbe, what would you say? One second, there's another aspect to it, uh, which is, you know, for those, as the uh, Rabbi said, who don't have children, um, the, you know, the Pasuk that says, for Nasati Lachem Yad Vashem, Asher Tov Mi Bonem Umi Bonos. So a Yad Vashem, like the deeds of a person, are in a sense, uh, for those who don't have children, their deeds are even more powerful in terms of um, what they leave behind, even than than children. Rabbi Ephraim, what would you, uh, the younger generation, what would you say? Um, so just to um, compliment the words of my parents on Zang um, we actually find in um, that the Rabbi Islam says, um, when he talks about Avram Avinu, he says, Why do I love Avram Avinu? Because he's going to command his family after him to observe the way of Hashem. So, even though Avram Avinu passed 10 Nisyanis, the Rabbi Islam doesn't say, I love him because he passed 10 Nisyanis. No, let's put that all aside. 
what is most favorable to the Rabbi Shalom, what the Rabbi Shalom loves most, is the continuity of his Malchus. The continuity of Malchus Shemaim, that is the, the whole entire purpose of creation, was that there should be Malchus Shemaim in the world. And when we have children that we can give over our Messiah to, and as my parents said, this doesn't only address people that have children, it could be Talmidim, or just people that that learn from us by example. It's, we're, we're giving over, we're transmitting Malchus Shemaim to the next generation, there is nothing more favorable to the Rabbi Islam than that. That's why we find that that Chassan Miyayim Chupasai, Chassan and Akala, the day of the Akala and Isa, all the sins are forgiven. What happened? Shat is is that they're they're involving themselves in the entire purpose of creation, which is bringing and transmitting Malchus Shemaim to the next gener- generation, so that it has continuity for eternity. Okay. <clears throat> in, um, the the Tversky's are anomalies. Your Hasidic Rebbe in Milwaukee, which is it's not Borough Park, it's not Flatbush, it's not Lakewood, it's not Muncie, it's not Yerushalayim. How do you bring up such Erlicha children? In in really, I mean, you know, uh, when it says me Arba. I think Milwaukee, I mean, to a New Yorker, is certainly one of them. How do you, how do you able to foster um, and, and not lose the, the Hamishkai, the Messira, in such a secular and foreign environment? And, you know, for Frat, you know, we, we have, when we have so many thousands of the, the Heilig Shluchim who live in, far, in foreign environments, I think this is something that they would probably be interested in hearing. So, um, my parents were quite unique in, in, in the fact that they were able to create this little island. And there, there really was nothing in Milwaukee. And then there was an immigrant population. When I grew up, the entire um, uh, Kehila were immigrants, most of whom had come over in the 19, uh, early 1920s, 1930s. Um, and after 1945, there was an influx of the uh, survivors. So in the, that was kind of the the, uh, the initial environment of, of the of the Kihila, But there were very few young people. When I was growing up, there was myself, my twin brother, and two other. Um, yeah, um, uh, they were cousins of, of each other that had grown up in a from home. We had no, no. Uh, friends, uh, there, 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 there was nobody else for for us. So it really was, it really was something in something in our home, and, uh, and I believe that the ingredients were number one. The um, it, it was a home that um, in which uh, my parents respected each other. Um, and in which they respected us. Um, the way in which they looked at us, and they, they didn't make very, very specific demands of us, but the way in which they looked at us, they, they, and there was a great deal of love for us, and there was a great, and, and there was a sense of the, that re, they respected us. They respected not only who we were at the time, but, and, 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 and we as, as young children, where, where had that sense that that they they had a certain trust uh, in, in not only in who we were but what we could be, and we always felt that sense of the fact that they they believed in us. And I think that made a ter- tremendous difference. In and there was there was a, there was a, there was a we, we had a pride in 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 who we were, and and, and, and my children. Um, we're growing up in an environment which at the time, our children, our children yes, remember that, our children, um, our children also grew up in, in, a, in a time when Milwaukee did not have a whole lot of, 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 of um, kids who were their age, who were uh, religious, but they were very proud of who they were. And, and it was that pride that influenced other children. 
become from, and, and through the children, their homes became from. So um, I think those, those were some of the primary ingredients. I think it also has to be noted that this was before the time that there was all of the uh, social media, all of the technology, all of the things that are, are so compelling and lure uh, kids away. I mean, I, I would like to think that even if that were uh, the case at the time, that we still, that children could have re remained intact, but certainly today it, it, um, it's really a much more daunting task to bring up uh, children with a misora, no matter where, where you live. So how do you do it, Reverend? How we do it? How we do it is, I think that what the rabbi, you create an environment within the home that the rabbi spoke about one of, first of all, shalom bias is a nicker. Shalom bias between parents. Um, the, other, the other thing is also a lot of davening. You daven, you daven a lot, a lot of tulu. And, um, and it doesn't hurt also I mean, at the time when um, my we my father did the shidduch, my father was called Tchena Rov. He was a from the you know from Europe. He had been uh, we were survivors, and he came to this country. And my husband, Will Dangizin, um, is American born, and of course his family. We lived uh, when we came to America. We settled in New York, and then here is a shidduch with with my husband who lives in, in Milwaukee in Amidbar. And my father had a very close relationship with the Satmar at the Bioil. He was not a Satmar, he was a Vishnitsa, but he, he had a very close relationship and he um, went to the Satmar and he told him about the Shaduk and he wanted to know, can he, should he send his daughter to, uh, to a place like Milwaukee? And um, the Satmarov said to him, don't worry about it. He said, Your, um, their children and grandchildren will be at least as Ehrlich as your other grandchildren, grandchildren who are going to grow up in, in either New York or your Shlaim or wherever. So you have nothing to worry about. That's all to get the Haskam of the Rebbe, uh, of the, <coughs> of, um, of the Satmarov. So you talk about the environment at home and the respect. Let me start to Amaisa. I heard over that the Lechavitch Rav, a, 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 an ignorant farmer, came to him and he said, Rebbe, it says, Boy Ato Banecha Ishtacha El Hateva. Shem says to Noyach. He says, How did Noyach and his wife and children fit into a word? <laughs> right, the table. All the seed them started laughing. And the Lechevich said, he said, he said, he said, when there's a whirlwind out, when there's a marble in the world, the only way to save your children is bring them into a dialogue together. Respect them, talk to them. Right. I'd right. like to ask. In the, in the sense of that the Rebbeton was saying just now, um, and, and, and specific, specifically in regard to your question, we have to be very discreet about what we allow into our homes with regard to the technology. If we are if we are irresponsible and allow our ch children the access uh, to the open media without with, without some kind of of, of uh, discipline and and uh, filter, then uh, uh, then we're guilty of of. Um, of destroying this the, it, it, it'll corrode their minds it will corrode their their feelings of the the power of the street is uh, is enormous and uh, if, uh, standing up against it and, and expecting young people to stand up against it is is uh, is a bit much so i want to go back to the question and maybe rather frame i'll give it with a different nusa what you did in milwaukee growing up in milwaukee is not that is a little bit of a sort of a, a stepping stone to what every child growing up in Borough Park, Flatbush, Muncie Lake has today, because you were in a Friar Street, a secular street. Today, because of media, even growing up in a home, you can be living in a secular street, right? What did your parents do 
to insulate you from that secular street and allow you to keep the Messiah. Are you you're speaking, talking to me? Yes. I don't remember ever my parents um, telling me not to do anything um, in a matter of insulating me. I mean, we didn't we didn't have a TV. I mean, we were we were the only the only family in Milwaukee that didn't have a TV. Um, but um, I, I tell the truth, I I grew up feeling privileged that I didn't have a TV. We were it was a sense that. We were given uh, at home that that were were made of uh, were were different because um, we're on a perhaps on a higher level that um, and we're we're held to a higher higher standard and um, and it just it was this tremendous covenant for us so I didn't really feel like I was being held back um, or you was where the use the word insulated I think it was just naturally that way. But it was it was a, a sense of honor, it was like a badge carrying a badge of honor. Came from Raimamus. Yep, yep. I just wanted to uh, to mention my the, the uh, my grandfather, my father's father. Um, he when he was asked many many years after he had come to Milwaukee, how is how is life in Milwaukee? He um, he responded, I don't know. I never left on a stipe. So that's, um, it was, he basically transported the Haif of Anastaipo into Milwaukee. And, and it's still there. It hasn't gone anywhere. You know, then there's, you know, there's a Psalm Cypher in the beginning of Pasha Shemois. The Psalm Cypher says, As Yankiv Ishu Beisoy Bo, Psalm Cypher says that the reason why Yankiv's children remained, uh, remained faithful despite the fact that they were in Erebus or they were in Mitzrayim. Because Ishu Beisaybo, Yaakov Avinu brought his home along. He didn't allow the the um, the culture of Mitzrayim to infiltrate the home, and that's how um, uh, that's how he remained. His children remained the ship they called, despite being being in Mitzrayim. And uh, it's very very much the case with the way we grew up. We we grew up in in the Hoif, in the Honest Life. Yeah, Mishkan Isayach Yisrael, the Mishkan of Klal Yisrael is portable. Yeah, we we can put it wherever we want, right? That, but it's the home; it's not the show. Wherever the Shechina Shri of Einayim, that's yeah. where the Mishkan of Paul Yisrael is. Um, how do you, as as public figures, how do you deal? How as parents, um, how do you deal with? You have tremendous obligations to the tzibur. People calling all time, a day or night. How does that invasion? On your time and privacy, not create with the children some type of resentment or the spouse. Like, who do I belong to? You know, am I second? How do we maintain that dialogue and family unit with all the needs of the tzibur? How do we balance that? Whoever wants to take that question. <laughs> I'll start, and then I'm going to, uh, first, number one, I think, and, 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 and some of this is, is, um, is, is, is pretty much out there in, in, the, in the literature, but it's not so much the quantity of time that you give to your family, it's the quality of time. So um, the fact that there is uh, an innovation of time that we, uh, that, uh, that we are accessible to, um, to a tzibur, that it does not, uh, does not necess does not negate the fact that we can give quality time, even though it's, it's not necessarily a whole lot. But what, what we can do in that little, little, little bit of time is, is very telling. And and and, and then it's, then there's always the issue of, of prioritization and <coughs> what are the things that we do allow to invade our time? Because if if our children see that our caring and our response for others is something that uh, that uh, we uh, that, that we turn to even even when it means that we have to give up sleep or give up a, a meal. Um, you know, we're setting we're setting a precedent. We're, we're role modeling for them, and and and, and that's 
it's also, in a certain sense, a beam there for them. It's not, not always, always the, the, you know, the, the spending time playing chess with them or, or something. It's, it's the fact that we are there in a way in which they, they understand that, that, um, uh, that, 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 that life, the, the home is, is a place where life is taking place. Yeah, I wanted to amplify uh, that thought and, and say that really it's not them and us. So it's not like here it's our family and then there are those out there who are catering to that are an intrusion <clears throat> on our family and our time. What really we, we've always thought is that these people become our family. And, um, and we love them, we love them like family, and we care about them like, as, uh, like family. And um, all of these people, I mean, we thank God we've raised generations in our community of our chavre that can are they themselves, they came from all sorts of backgrounds, but they themselves can are have children and grandchildren, and, and we shop nachas from them, uh, uh, like we do, of our own children, and I told, I know that my son, we get calls constantly about our son, Rabbi Ephraim, and somebody just stopped me to speak the other day and said to me, you know, I love your son. He says, I really, really love your son. He was there for me in, in good times and in good times, I really love your son. And his community, whenever we come there, we it, it's just one big family just like ours is over here in milwaukee but when it's not them and us it makes a a, a huge difference and beautiful i, I made beautiful my, many times the uh people who came and come home friday nights and we had sometimes our children would have to sit our son will remember they'd sit in the kitchen because there wasn't room at the table but these people did for our children what we didn't have time they'd sit uh, in the living room and read them stories. I didn't know, often get a chance to read them stories. They would take them on on trips to the library or whatever. They became part of the family. Beautiful. Rabbit, so let me follow up with a different question. What do you value most about your relationship with your son, Rebbe Frayim? You, do you, how, many, how many weeks and months do you have? I, we only have a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what I value most, I well, I, you know what? I, I tell people that I can't take any credit for my, for our son with the frying. He was just he he was born a tzaddik. He was born a tzaddik. He was born so special that I, I know I maybe I shouldn't say this for people to hear. I don't want any ayin horrors on him. Can a hurry? Can a poo poo poo? But uh, he is. He, uh, like you say, and in, in Yiddish, a spiegel, a in him. I, I look at him, and if, <clears throat> if there's if there's nothing else that I'll have accomplished with my life, but have had a son like him, I'm okay. Yeah, but Frayim, what do you value most about your relationship with your parents? Well. Um... As my mother said, you're, 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 there's not enough time in uh, in in the world for me. Yeah, it's true, very true. Um, the, they know, and um, and I think everyone else knows that there, I am that whatever whatever I have uh, whatever I have become whatever that whatever whatever that's worth is to their credit um they uh, they've been my role models and they still are my role models i mean really every there's nothing that i do that i don't think what would my parents do in this situation and i try to um i try to emulate that it's, it's, they are just everything <coughs> rubbish, there is nothing in my life that i uh, that i do without asking myself that question I'll say Yagi or my say, or my say if I yeah. say. I know that I'm my, so, I'm my, I'm my stender and shul. That's what it says. 
You know, there was a Hey Luga Yid in Yerushalayim, Rabbi Yisrael Shimon Kastelanitz, and I went to him one, once on Purim, before I left Eretz Yisrael as a Bacha. He was old Slanim and Alti Yerushalayim, and I asked him, he had beautiful mice, and he was very old. I said, Rabbi Yisrael Shimon, Zerk Tmecha Masa, tell me over a story. Tell me Shem Paya. Zerk Tmecha Masa, Ein Masa. So he looked at me, he said, you don't Ein Masa. Musa Yagiyah Masa La Masa Vaisa. <laughs> I'd like to ask the Rebbe in closing. We know that it's a, a natural, just like you, before you spoke about natural, we want to pass on a legacy. It's also a natural in every child. There's the, the terrible twos. But more than that, every child wants to keep his, to create his own identity. We see that by the Ovis. Avram was Midas Achesed. Yitzchak is diametrically opposed, is Din, right? And yet, so how did you bring up children that on one hand say, want to emulate you and your Heliger Rebetzin, but at the same time, don't feel squashed or the inability you know, to create their own identity because there's a dichotomy there. If you're going to be my Spiegel, then how do you create yourself? but you've managed to create healthy children, notwithstanding that very elemental human struggle. How have you done that? Um, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the, the really the simple truth is, is that I left the raising of my children to the Revitzen. <laughs> she, she is the one. Hashlech <laughs> Yavcha. I trusted, I trusted her intuition. And um, and uh, uh, generally speaking, she was the one who who spent the most kind of quality time with them, and and I, I tried to get to get out of the way. But uh, to whatever extent I, I was involved, I think that both the Rebbeson and I um, uh, were able to individuate. We 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 we. Uh, we were able to see what the what the kids were uh, able to do in their own unique ways, which fostered that and encouraged it, and, uh, and 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 tried and tried to support the fact that they were that they were different. And, they, and we have you know, we have eleven children; they are as different from one another as as kids can be. At the same time, there is a, a basic common denominator amongst all of them. Uh, of integrity, of uh, of wanting to, uh, to to contribute, wanting to give. Um, there's a, there is that there is that all of them have that that fundamental um, that, that that foundation. But um, and and I think that we tried as best as we could to to, to understand the, the, those differences and and to encourage them. So. Um, uh, that's pretty much, uh, I, I believe, yeah. one of the keys to our success. If I may interrupt, um, there is a there is a story that the uh, you know the Shinivarub was uh, conducting himself very 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 differently than his father the Sanzaru. And when um, when he was asked why he conducts himself so differently than his father. She never would have answered, I do exactly what my father did. He didn't conduct himself like his father. And so I'm not going to conduct himself like my father. That's what she never would have said. And your question, um, that despite the uh, the how we establish our own identity is because that's exactly what our parents did. Despite um, them following their Messiah, they uh, we watch them create their own identity, and um, I think that each and every one of us um, are just learning by example. Hey, well, I'd, like that I'd like to just add one <clears throat> one um, small point here, and the nachas <laughs> that I the greatest nachas I have one. Uh, among others, but the, uh, I get great nachas that my children, Baruch Hashem, who are so different from each other, 
love each other so much and respect each other so much. There's so many times when uh, Rabbi ben and our oldest son, will uh, be giving a shir and he'll be quoting Rabbi Ephraim and vice versa. And, it's, and when they need something where the other one has expertise or has more of a grasp of a situation, they'll call each other and, 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 and get advice or get insight from the other one. And I can tell you that for, for a mother, certainly, there's nothing that warms my heart more than that. Well, thank you very much to the esteemed, great, holy Tversky family for spending the time with us. <laughs>